بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد the issue of the prayer the issue of the salat in islam is azim we can never underestimate the importance of maintaining that tie with our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he's ordered us and that's our purpose is to fuf- our purpose in life is to fulfill that purpose by worshiping him and him alone kama qala ta'ala wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa li'abudun i have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me and one of the greatest forms of worship is in fact the second pillar of islam which is the prayer and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about the prayer man taraka salat fakad kafara whoever leaves the prayer has disbelief and the scholars of islam um they speak about the person who has left the prayer and if they've left the prayer for more than 3 days that if they don't uh if they don't make uh make toba you know return to allah in repentance and begin to pray then it is actually something that is uh requires the death penalty and this is in is is with the 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 consensus of the ulama and so it shows us the importance of the prayer as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man taraka salat fa kad kafara whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved so what does this mean for us we're going to read a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in regard to this but first before we read this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we need to know a few things about uh qada and qada when we talk about qada the term qada in arabic it refers to making up the prayer and the scholars they mentioned for example imam saidi mentioned in his book uh manhaj as-salikin is a book in fiqh he said woman fatahu as-salat he said and the person who misses the prayer wajib alayhi qada'uhu that it's an obligation for that person to make that prayer up and al-fa'it al-fa'ita as sheikh sa'ad al-hijri hijri he explained Al-fa'ita. The al-fa'ita is the person who missed the prayer. This is the person who has missed the prayer. He said, "Al-fa'ita, he is salat alati kharaja." Or actually, it's not the person, but al-fa'ita is the salat. He is salat alati kharaja waktaha qabla fi'laha. That so the fa'ita is the prayer that was missed. The prayer that was missed. Uh, and meaning that the the time for the prayer elapsed or passed and that person missed that prayer uh imam saidi said wajib alayhi qada'uhu that it's an obligation to make this prayer up and the sheikh mentioned in explaining uh imam saidi's qaul his statement he said al wujub bi ma'na ilzam yuthab in fa'alahu wa yu'aqib in tarakahu he said and the wa- the obligation here it refers to something that a person must do and that they will be rewarded if they do it meaning if they make up this prayer and they will be punished or deserving of punishment if they do not do it and then he explains what qada means he said qada huwa fi'l al-faridah ba'da al-waqtiha so this is important for us that we learn this terminology al qada as we hear often a lot of people say qada qada means to make up what you missed qada means to make up what you missed as it came in the hadith uh, hadith of aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha when one of the sahabiyat were ask asked her about the uh about the prayer of the woman who the woman who missed uh her uh who due to menses due to her menstruation she missed uh she she doesn't pray because as we know women c- cannot pray when they're on their menses and they do not fast Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha responded 
uh, when the woman asked about this, she first said, "Are you one of the the Horodi uh, to ent? Uh, you know, are you one of the Khawadij? Because she was like, you know, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu we did not have to, uh, you know, this question, this issue, did not come about because she said, رضي الله تعالى عنها, she said, إنما يؤمر بقضاء صوم ولا يؤمر بقضاء صلاة. That verily we were ordered, meaning during the time of the Prophet وسلم, we were ordered to uh, to make up قضاء. إنما يؤمر أو كما قالت يؤمر بقضاء صوم ولا يؤمر بقضاء الصلاة. So she used the term قضاء. قضاء meaning to make up. So verily we were ordered. During the time of the Prophet وسلم, to make up our fasting and not make up the prayer. So women are not, it is not an obligation or it is not for the women, it's not from Islam, that they have to make up their prayers for uh, when they were on men- menstruation. They missed it. And this is just from their naqs fi deen. This is the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. It's their natural tabi'ah that they have menses. And it is something that they're not held accountable for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them with this. And so this shows us what the importance of the term of understanding these terminologies. Qada. Qada means to make up what we missed. So the Sheikh said, qadahu." So if someone has missed the prayer, it's an obligation to make it up. And this is in accordance, and he said, and the evidence for its obligation is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Bukhari wa Muslim. This hadith was in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, if a person uh, sleeps, you know, they sleep through the time of prayer, or they, they, غفلة, that they were, you know, unconscious, or they, you know, were forgetful of it, then they should pray it when they remember it. So, the Imam, uh, Imam Sa'di use that as an evidence to show us that it's an obligation to make up our prayer. But there's some very in-depth issues that we're going to talk about. So this is an incredibly important lesson that I hope we can, we ask Allah the Almighty to gain us benefit uh, during this from the scholars. And so then Imam Sa'di, he said, after he said, Wajiba alayhi qadahu, that it's an obligation to make up, and he gave us the evidences, and he said, Qol, he said, Fawrin murattibin. This is very important. Fawrin murattibin, meaning that when you make qada, when you make up your prayer, you should make it up as soon as possible. Fawrin. You should not hesitate. That when you remember, you should make it up. Don't be lax with the prayer. This is your relationship with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marattabin, meaning that you must make your prayers up in order. For example, if for some reason someone slept a deep sleep and they missed Fajr, Dhuhr, and Salat al-Asr, when it's time, when they wake up, and when uh, when they wake up, because the qada you can pray even at the prohibited times, because qada is for something that's wajib. So this is the, an obligato- obligatory duty that you're trying to uh, compensate for. So you can pray those at the time at the prohibited time. So maybe you missed those three prayers as we mentioned. When you make up those prayers, you make them up with the tartib, with the same order, as long as it doesn't threaten the walked, the time of the Asr prayer. So for example, you wake up and it's you, the, the, the Jama'at has already prayed Salat al-Asr, but Asr is still in, there's still time before Maghrib, you, maybe you still have 30 minutes, you still have an hour, whatever. Then, that means since you have enough time, you can make your Qada for all of those prayers before that time in 30 minutes. So you would start first with the Fajr prayer that you missed first. And then after Fajr, you would pray Dhuhr by making your niyyah to pray Qada for Dhuhr. And then you would make uh, your uh, Salat al-Asr with the niyyah to make Asr as long as you're not going to miss the time of Asr. If, if Asr is going to, you're going to miss Asr, then it would be better to pray Asr before the other prayers that are threatening for you to miss that time. And I hope that's clear. Those are some of the basic 
issues that when we miss the prayer, we should make it up. And those references that we just read in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu was in reference to the person also who was ma'dhur. This is for the person who missed the prayer due to a valid Islamic excuse, meaning due to sleep, they overslept. So it was out of their hands. They, and not they intentionally overslept, but this is the person who overslept unintentionally. Or the person who, uh, maybe they were unconscious or whatever have you, or the person who was forced, you know, they were forced at gunpoint or whatever the situation was, they were forced to miss the prayer or they just forgot. They were so busy in the day, wow, subhanAllah, I can't believe I didn't pray. Salat al-Dhuhr or something. Now it's Salat al-Asr is coming in or what have you. They totally forgot. And this happens because we're weak. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about this in an authentic hadith. Uh, he mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَجَاوَزَ لِي عَنْ أُمَّتِي الْخَطَى وَالنِّسْيَانِ وَمَا اسْتُقْرِهُ عَلَيْهِ رُوَاهُ إِبْنْ مَاجَ وَصَحَهُ عَلَى الْبَانِ فِي مِشْكَاتْ وَإِرْوَى so in this hadith that Imam Al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, uh, in his uh, checking of the hadith, determined that it was a sound hadith that was uh, narrated in Ibn Majah, rahimahullah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in this hadith, Verily Allah excuses uh, my, my nation, my ummah, from their what they've done out of mistakes, what they've done from forgetfulness, and what they've done be, due to being forced, being forced to do so. Not forced that your 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 spouse or something was saying, "Hey, I want you to go to the store," and you missed the prayer. No, or your teacher was making you do homework. That's not force. But force means you feel a th- real legitimate threat to your person that you will be killed or destroyed or something like this. That would be forced. Now let's get to a very important hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and some of the details that the ulama, the salaf and the khalaf, those who came after them, what they mentioned about this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is from Umdat Tahkam, Bab Qada al-Salat. This is the chapter of making up the prayer. Imam Maqdasi said, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, قال عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من نسي الصلاة فليصليها إذا ذكرها لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك وتلا قوله تعالى وأقيم الصلاة لذكري رواه بخاري ومسلم ولي مسلم من نسي الصلاة أو نام عنها فكفارتها and you saliha ida dhakaraha ruahu muslim in this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was narrated by anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever forgets the prayer whoever forgot their prayer man nasi salat then they should pray it when they remember it and there is no kafara laha illa dhalik and there's no other making it up except that so the Prophet ﷺ said, لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك. There's no other way to make it up. You can't pay charity, you can't do this to make up for the prayer. But rather, the, the making up for that is when you remember, you should pray immediately. And then the Prophet ﷺ read the ayat, the statement of Allah the Almighty, where he said, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ لِذِكْرِ And established the prayer for my remembrance. And then in another narration, in the narration in Muslim, مَنْ نَسِيَ صَلَاتْ أُنَّامَ عَنْهَا فَكَفَّارَتَهَا أَنْ يُسَلِّيهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا So in this narration, in the narration that was collected in Muslim, Sahih Muslim, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever forgets the prayer or they, they oversleep, then they, the, the expiation of it is that they should pray it when they remember it. So pray it as soon as you wake up. If you forgot your prayer, you missed Fajr, you overslept. Then when you wake up, don't say, well, you know, I'm going to wait and stuff. Although there's some, the, the scholars, the, the ulama, the fuqaha, they have some differences if it's during the nahi. But if it's the time where it's prohibited. But the evidence seems to suggest, according to many of the imams of the sunnah, is that 
you should pray it fold in, that you should pray it immediately. Meaning you should make wudu, you, you overslept, make wudu and pray it. And this is what I feel c- most comfortable with from studying with the mashayikh that I've studied with. And I feel more comfortable myself uh, being safe, safer that way instead of waiting, but rather praying the prayer. And as I said, the ulama, they differ in this issue. Here, here's one of the differences that the ulama of Ahl sunnah اختلف العلماء حول تاجب مبادر إلى فعلها and the ذكرها. So the scholars or تأخيرها. So the jamhur majority of the ulama. So this is important for us. The majority, jamhur ulama, majority, say that it's an obligation that you should make up that prayer immediately. So if you wake up or you've forgotten your prayer and, and then as soon as you remember it, you should make it up. Majority of the Ahimmat uh, Arba, so Imam Abu Hanifa said this, Imam Malik says this, and Imam Ahmed and and his those who follow his school of thought. Those three great Imams of Ahl Sunnah, they all said that. Imam Shafi'i, another great Imam of Ahl Sunnah, he believed, he held the, the view that it was recommended to make it up uh immediately, but it was permissible to delay it, and he had his, def- his, his details regarding that. But that's neither here nor there. We're not going to get deep into that issue, but at least we have an idea about it. The majority, which uh, and Allah knows best, I feel is the safest, going with those three imams and their qol, that it is better to make it up immediately. Another issue which is very important for us, for those people who have missed a lot of prayers. Also, the ulama وَأَخْتَلَفُوا فِي تَارِكِهَا عَمْدٍ حَتَّى خَرَجَ وَقْتَهَا So the scholars also differed about the person who deliberately missed the prayer. Uh, they did this intentionally. They deliberately missed the prayer. They differed. And what they, they, their differences were, they differed over whether they should make it up or not. So this means if a person has missed the prayer deliberately, they for whatever reason they were in school, they were out doing something haram or they were doing something halal, whatever, whatever they were doing, but they deliberately did not pray. And they let salat salat go outside of its time. Regardless of whether it was hundreds of salat or regardless if it was only one time, it was only one prayer that you deliberately did not pray it without a legitimate Islamic excuse. The scholars differ over this issue. Can they make, should they make it up or not? Some scholars say no. A, a group of the ulama, they say that the person who deliberately misses the prayer, they should not uh, they, there is no making it up. And let's see, let's look at this. قد أخ, uh, قد اتفقوا العلماء على حصول الاثم عظيم على الذي يلحق من اخرها لغير عذر حتى خرج وقتها so the scholars are in full agreement all the scholars are in agreement that the person who deliberately misses the prayer is uh, has has done a great sin a major sin but the issue is do you make up those prayers that you missed or not that's the issue. Uh, the four imams, meaning Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Imam uh, Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an. Those four great imams of the sunnah, they said that it's an obligation to make it up and that the person... It has a done a wicked sin, and only and only Allah subhanahu wa taala can forgive them. If Allah chooses, He can forgive them. But that that person should make toba, they should make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So those four imams, and also a group of the uh, salaf. Uh, those four imams said it's an obligation to make it up. A group of the salaf, they said, min salaf wa khalaf. Some of the salaf, those early, uh, meaning like, uh, meaning from the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, with Tabi'a Tabi'een, and some of those later generation scholars as well, they said, whoever, men ta'amada ta'akhira salat ala waqtiha min ghayr udr fala sabilahu ila qada'iha. So, uh, abadan. So there's also, this, this is, gets down to the issue. The two differences of opinion. So the four imams said it's an obligation to make qada, to make up those prayers. The 
a group of the Salaf and some of the later Imams, and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn al-Qayyum, and uh, some, some other Imams, they said that there is no Sabila, and also a, a group of the Salaf. They said there's no way to make up the prayer for the person who delayed the prayer. This is the person who just delayed it. We're not talking about someone who just totally stopped praying for a year or a week or part of Ramadan or whatever. But they said whoever deliberately delays the prayer outside of its time, then there, without an, any legitimate uh, sharia excuse, then there is no way to make it up, absolutely. And what they must do, they just have to make a sincere tawbah, repentance to Allah, and a lot of istighfar, and a lot of nawafil, a lot of extra prayer, just to, to, to make up for the... the the, the shortcomings that they had, but it does not expiate. The, that person cannot expiate. This is according to a group of the Salaf. And Ibn Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim also held this view. The four Imams said, no, instead you can make up, uh, you can make the Qada if you deliberately delayed that prayer. And they had very extensive debates about this. And I don't think it's necessary for us to get into all of those those deep, uh, in-depth issues. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, uh, he mentioned that uh, in his statement that the person who uh, missed this great type of worship, then it's not accepted from them. Uh, meaning that this this worship is only accepted during its time, and he he made he made the mention. He said, "Waminha," like some other types of ibadah that's only accepted during its time. For example, salat muakhra an waqtiha bila udr. He mentioned that the salat the person who missed the prayer without a legitimate sharia excuse. And then he used as evidence, he said, وَقَوْلُهُ صَلَى اللَّهِ مَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَكَةً مِنَ الْعَسْرِ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَغْرِبَ شَمْسِ فَقَدْ أَدْرَكَ الْعَسْرِ That the person, the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever catches a raka'ah a, a raka, uh, of, of, the, of the asr prayer before uh, Maghrib comes in, then they have achieved the Asr prayer. That, that's the Waqt al-Tirari. You know, that was a prayer that means they were forced to do that. Uh, it was the absolute last time you could pray the Asr. So if you got one Raka'ah in before, why, and then all of a sudden you hear the Adhan for Maghrib, then your, your Salat al-Asr will be accepted. And so, Shaykh al-Islam used this as evidence and then they went into the debate, but we don't want to get too deep into the debate. We just want to keep it as simple as possible for our, uh, for our purpose here. And we will go over some of the benefits the Shaykh mentioned in this hadith. Some of the benefits of this hadith is that it's an obligation to make the qada, you know, when you miss the prayer. It's an obligation for the person who is forgotten and the person who overslept to pray it when they remember, as soon as they remember or they wake up. Number two, another benefit of this hadith is that it's an obligation to uh, do that as soon as possible. And the person who is delayed it, they should, uh, when they remember, they should do, do it as soon as possible and not be lazy in that. Another benefit is that there is no sin on the person who delayed their prayer due to a legitimate Sharia excuse, meaning they didn't actually delay it, but they, they prayed it late outside of its time because they either forgot or they, um, they were sleeping or those kind of excuses or they were forced as we mentioned. Some other, another benefit of this hadith, which goes to the issue of the person who missed the prayer and Allah knows best, that Uh, as we said, Shaykh al-Islam said that there is no qada, but the four imams said that there is qada. Okay, and not just Shaykh al-Islam, some of the salaf also held that there is no qada. So being safest at, 
al aqal from what we we studied is what i recall the sheikh saying he said yeah, tabar, he said that uh, that it is better because that prayer is still they're still responsible for it that it's probably best to try to make up those prayers so if a person had stopped praying for a certain period of time or whatever they should attempt to make up their prayer as far as they could remember back they should try to make qada and the safest thing is that, and Allah knows best is to make that qada if you hold that view if you hold that you should make qada in that situation where you deliberately may miss the prayer but as we mentioned a group of the salaf and shaykh al-islam as well said there is no qada that if you hold that if you hold that view then there's no qada you just need to make toba and a lot of istighfar and a lot of nawafil just constantly every day trying to do extra prayers to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and favor the other view is what the four imams held that there is qada and if a person is missed a prayer for a year it's going to be impossible for them to make up all that or, or for a long period of time so if a person holds that view they should just try to make up as much as they can and uh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hold us accountable for that which we're unable to do fear Allah as much as you can so they should try to make qada for what they are able to 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 remember you know what's going to be easy enough and the same make toba and a lot of istighfar and seeking forgiveness and guidance from Allah and a lot of nawafil and we ask Allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with the sawab and anything i said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that i said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad